So it's a numbers game, right? That's why you have to play the long game. That's why you don't want a part-time ISA. In my opinion, you want a full-time ISA so you can get to that volume, that pipeline that you're going to need for it to work. Um, And then you got to work it. All right, folks, uh, we're here uh, and we have a good one for you today. This is going to be this is a really interesting, uh, you know, conversation uh, because I get a lot of questions around circle prospect, because that's a type of prospecting that everyone you either love it or hate it. Uh, You know, a lot of people think, oh, my goodness, that's the worst thing ever. It's going to take so long. How can you even be productive with that? Um, so there's a lot of interest and also a lot of skepticism around circle prospecting. Uh, well, today I have a special guest here for you guys, Carlos Gonzalez out of San Antonio, Texas. Uh, you know, an OG uh, when it comes to you know working with the with the ISA model. Uh, we started working together back in 2016 with yep. Carlos and his team. Uh, it was so long ago that I called up Carlos myself, and I was I was you know doing. Signing up clients at that time, I was doing the sales and the management, and the fulfillment. I was doing you know everything at once. Uh, so so Carlo, I remember calling them up and kind of saying, "Hey, Carlos, I see you're looking for an ISA." Because yeah, I think I think if I remember, you published a job posting or something like that. I did, Carlos. I did. Yeah. So so I saw it and I go, "Ah, let me give this guy a call." And you know, I, I got I've got an even better option for you than hiring someone you know locally. Um, so that was the start of it. But but Carlos, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, you know, how'd you get into the business? What do you, you know, a little bit about your your company, and and why did you get interested in this whole ISA model? Because it wasn't for me. I'd love to take credit. Oh, I gave him the idea. You were already looking for someone uh, to do this role. So, so tell us the the origin story a little bit. Sure, sure. So I've been a licensed realtor going on fifteen years. Um, I'm going to be forty five, so I've been licensed for quite some time, uh, right around thirty years of age. Um, but I was I was in the business prior to that, so I grew up in the business. My father was a real estate broker and a mortgage loan originator back when I was a kid in my teens, and so um, I had an option, right? When you have a part time job, you're either working flipping burgers at that age, right, or <laughs> or if you get lucky, you get a cushy job. So um, nice. I decided to be my father's assistant, unlicensed assistant, and um, nice. I, that's how I got into the business at Love the it. age of eighteen. Uh, right out of high school, I became a legal age and I did my first flip. Back then, it was relatively easy, good credit, um, you know, stated income, stated assets. You got the money for reno and the purchase, you Woo! free money. So, yeah. but I didn't get licensed until my mid to late 20s because, quite frankly, who the heck was going to hire a 22 year old to list a $400,000 home? Right. So Not I knew that. that. So, um, but Eventually, I came to that age where where I felt confident getting into the business and re, you know retail sales, so I did that, and I started growing. Um, I, I met a loan officer who became my uh, coach and mentor. He helped me build some structure around my business and grow. And one of the things was you know having at least three to four pillars of your business, and um, you can only do so much with past clients and referrals. So we added networking and business referral relationships. And then, um, you know, it, it's no secret prospecting, cold calling and whatnot. But so I wanted to hire somebody to do that for me. And I didn't want to deal with the angry, disgruntled expireds and the know-it-all <laughs> or sell by owners. I just didn't Love have it. a temperament at that time. Um, so that's why I wanted to pursue and explore circle prospecting. So I put out a couple of ads on Facebook, some Facebook, uh, realtor forum groups, and and maybe even Craigslist and you and I connected through one of those, uh, postings. And, uh, we started working together and w- one of the, I still didn't want to deal with Facebook and expired at that point. So after you and Neither. I had a combo, geo, uh, geo dialing, geo circle dialing, um, just, uh, faster neighborhood, either just random, hey, are you interested in buying or selling or promoting just listed, just sold, whether they were mine or my brokerages. And, um, you know, it doesn't, it's not the silver bullet that feeds you over the night. People do need yes. to understand that. It it's a took thing. a good six months for that pipeline to grow. Um, yeah. And speed to dial is important. Following up and nurturing on those are, are probably even more important. Because it's not 100%. some lead that came into some Facebook ad or a pay-per-click where you got to dial it right away. It's, it's, it's a nurture 
Um, you're building that relationship, building that trust until eventually when they're ready, you're their guy or gal, right? So it took at least six months. Um, you know, you should you you really need to have the systems and the discipline to do the follow-up. Uh, I'll be the first one to admit, I did not. I hated it because I still didn't know them. I was used to all my business, whether it was a lot or a little, depending on your perspective. It People was always new and liked you. They knew yes. and liked you. So or, I, or they you knew know, someone, or they knew someone that knew and liked you, right? Yes, it was warm. It was warm and fuzzy and friendly, and there was already some trust automatically built in. All, all I had to do was reinforce it and nurture their relationship. And you know, it was thirty to sixty days, and then we were looking at homes because it was that kind of referral. But the geo, it's it's different. You know, it, it's it's uh, you know, you go, you do go on a lot of appointments eventually, and and it takes a while for people to get to the point when they're ready. But it pays off. As as poorly organized as I was, because I didn't have a CRM, I had a spreadsheet, wow. which became very hard to manage after about a year, year and a half. So eventually, I got into there, a CRM. There, there, there's hundreds of people this, at this list at this point, right? I mean, it's it's, it's not oh, yeah. a few dozen. There's hundreds of people in there. Got it? Yeah, because I remember the average um, when 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 I when I started kind of um, measuring the results from the ISA. You know, it was it was at least five a week. Um, just depending. So, you know, give it a year, that adds up, you know, there's, there's a couple of hundred easy um, there. And so after about six months, with as poorly organized and structured as I was, I started seeing a great return on my investment. Um, you know, at the tail end of things, I think I was at 24 deals closed a year. And considering the cost, the, the investment with the ISA and the data, that is better than even paying other realtors referral fees for referring from out of area. It, it's so much better. Um, and you never, and you don't have to deal with the disgruntled or the screaming or, or you know, a lack of trust because of a bad experience. The ISA is dealing with that, right? If they get yeah. past that, then they get put on your spreadsheet and get put on your calendar. And you get to it as a realtor, it, it's, 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 a, it's a much easier transition, much easier conversation. I love that. I love that. So, you know, you get started, your ISS is generating, you know, roughly about one one potential seller lead every single day. That that's like a very typical it's not like it's not, oh my goodness, it was like five a day. No, no, no. Very not a crazy, you know, kind of results, a very consistent, uh, can be a very, 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 a very average result. I think the the unaverage thing you did was you stuck with it, you know, past. You know, I think a lot of people will will do it for 30 days. They go, hey, I've got 10 people, 20 people in my pipeline, and they're not doing anything for a year, I'm out of here. Like, this is like way too, uh, too much work. This is crazy. I, I want something that gives me more now business. But you kind of stuck with it, uh, you know, months and months and months. So you're saying within that first year, you were able to close five deals, I'm sorry, four deals just from the leads generated from Circle that first year. Oh, it was more than that. Oh, so okay. Was, yeah, because I was closing two a month after six oh, months. Oh, two a month. My bad, my yeah. bad. Misunderstood. Yeah, yeah two so, a month. So two, so two a month. Okay, so that's way better than four. So two a month after six months. So they were starting to do something. You know, again, for me, six months is 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 go time. Like that is that that's a that's what a farming act. That's, that's not, as long as it takes for a farming activity to really give you some results. But but even that's a really good result. So two a month after six months, and so you had accumulated. Uh, just just I'm going off rough numbers here about 100 100 150 people in the list when it started okay. paying dividends yeah 100 150 people and then you started getting people uh in there and again granted with what you said Carlos you know just being honest with people you didn't have your systems like down like this wasn't like a like a super well structured and, and you know and I tell people sometimes you just got to fail forward right i mean you know yep. yeah if carlos would have had it dialed in it would have been 3 a month i mean maybe Man. But guess what? Most people do zero a month. <laughs> you know, all of these things. <laughs> that that that's the typical result uh, uh, from circle prospecting, unfortunately, because you don't you don't you don't stick with it. Uh, uh, give it enough time, uh, and 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 I love that. Another one of our clients, you know, uh, uh, a little bit later than you, Ron Manala out of Seattle, Washington. He um, it took him about a year to get it. What was it within? It, it, no, probably it was probably two years. He did it for two years. He got a thousand people in a list. And this was this was renters, and it was more than just sellers. A lot of people, he wouldn't say no. He wouldn't say no to anything. He would get anything in there he wanted. It. If you know, if they're renting, if they're owning, if they're answering the phone, I want to talk to them. And yep. you know, I think that he got he accumulated a thousand people on the list. 
He had a thousand people in a, in a in a spreadsheet too. He now has a CRM. Oh, gosh. He, he he came from the I think from car sales, and he's like, "Where's my list?" He he was used to working the list. Like, I just need a list. I need a list. Give me a phone. I know how I know how to you know generate business because he came from an industry that did a lot of commission sales. I wish more agents had that attitude, right? Where's my list? Give me people that will pick up the phone that might be thinking of buying what I have to sell, and, and I'll talk to them and I'll get them in the door eventually, right? And he accumulated a thousand people in that list. And then I didn't hear from him for like four years because he's like, no, I guess I'm good. I got a thousand people to call. I'm good, man. I can, I, I'm getting deals from this. Right. And he was able to generate, you know, two, three, four, one, I think one of his, was well, up to four transactions a month wow. in the high months from a list of a thousand people. Right. So his, his main focus was how do I get a big list of potential sellers, potential buyers? Just give me a list. And it was way more reasonable than paying Zillow for those numbers, for paying oh, yeah. you know Facebook for those numbers, or paying Google for those numbers. It was a much better way, a, a more scalable way to do it for him because he just needed people to talk to. People, just give, give me people that are pick up the phone and that are willing to have a conversation, I'll take care of the rest. So I, and that sounds like you, Carlos, like, hey, put the people in the list, put them in the list, mm -hmm. put them in the list, I'll figure out a way to reach out to them and then, you know, little by little, uh, I'll, I'll get them in there converting. And Carlos, for the people that are wondering, that's awesome. Two deals a month from Circle within six months is amazing. What did that nurture as disorganized as it was? Give us your best recollection. What was that process like? Like like your ISA would drop them in the middle of the list, boom, 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 boom. And then what would you do, you know, when, once they were in there? Well, like roughly, what was a, what was a follow-up process like? So, so sometimes they would just go on the list if they if they had expressed interest, but they didn't want to commit to even a phone call, right? So the ISA would work on nurturing that lead until they was ready to go to, and so they were ready to have a conversation with me. When that would happen, they put them on my calendar. So you share your, your Google Calendar, whatever calendar you're using, <coughs> excuse me, and then and then you follow up and you call them. And you need to understand that even though they said yes to the phone call. Even though you know it's a good number, you got the address, 20% of the time they'll answer if you're lucky. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's a phone call, it's a text. Book you got to continue follow book, up. Book the appointment, right? Book the appointment on the calendar. They've got the email. They've got the reminder. And I love that you shared that because that's reality, right? That is. is a real thing. You know, I but I booked it. No, no one's picking up what's going on. Like that, that is a, that is a real thing that can happen. But, but, you know, I think I tell, I tell a lot of folks, the fact that they booked the appointment just makes them more qualified th than the other people on the list, but yeah. there's still somebody on your team already spoke to them. That is better yeah. than a Facebook or, or Zillow lead that you've never been able to reach. Yeah. You know, you, you don't even know if the number is any good. So you, it's a numbers game, right? That's why you have to play the long game. That's why you don't want a part-time ISA, in my opinion. You want a full-time ISA so you can get to that volume, of that pipeline that you're going to need for it to work. Um, and then you got to work it. You know, you got to work it. And that's, that is one of my weak points. I, I, sh I, I hate admitting it, but it's true. I don't like to, you know, it, it, if, if I would have been more disciplined, I, I probably would have been closing three or four a month. Um, yeah. My whole mindset has changed. You know, I've been doing this a lot longer now. Um, I decided to sign up again with Power ISA because uh, last year was a very weird year for me. It was a horrible year. I think I only did about six million. Our average price point is about three twenty-five. It's probably the worst year I've had in six, seven years. Medical issues I only worked half a year. Um, so I'm going to be working my my past client's sphere of influence, but I need to play catch up. And yeah. this isn't going to pay me tomorrow, <laughs> but it's going to pay off their quarter. Um, so. You know, it's, you, it's you, very important. You've got the timing you, down. You got the timing yeah. down. Okay, great. I'm starting now because I want to reap the rewards towards the end of the year, second half of the year. That's going to yeah. be, I mean, and, but 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 you know how to do it now, right? It's a very different situation than it was a few years ago. And I, I think that's awesome because you did this. It wasn't like a six month thing. You did this for a couple of years. I think it was actually more At than least. a couple of years. It was, it was uh, more than know, a couple so, of years. Yeah. And you must have accumulated hundreds of people, you know, uh, in that in that nurture list and that nurture list. So you can do it again, right? hundred yeah. percent. If anything, there's way more people in San Antonio now. Then at least from what I understand, there's even more, oh, more yeah. people uh, there than, than uh, you know, six, seven was, it? oh man, almost eight years ago, eight years ago. Uh, you know, so, so, you know, Texas has only gotten more popular, uh, tons of people moving there from the States, from Latin America, from Mexico, from everywhere. Right. So 
very popular destination. It's just a question of reaching out and trying to and yep. trying to you know uh, find those people and even hit up that old list. I would hit up that list of your your, your nurtures. They've already bought. They've already sold. Now it's just you know for the second time. Like eight years later, yeah. it's time to buy the next property. Had to move, move them up, move them down. You know, uh, whatever it is they need to do, because I think it comes. It is. It's simple, but not easy. Having a list of people to call, having a list to work. It is. It is. It is. It's not an uneasy thing to build. It's not an easy thing to do, but it is simple like that. And you can build that list with ads. That's another way to no, not knocking ads. Another way to build it. You can get it off of the expired for some owner. That's another way to get the list. Your own database. I love database, man. I'm the, I used to be the database guy before I was the ISA guy. Uh, you build a list off of your own database. Those are the best. But but like you said, I love the way you laid it out. You know, at the beginning, a, a, a stable business, a successful business, has more than one list, right? And, and more oh, yeah. than one source to generate that list. You don't want to put all your eggs in one basket because you you're vulnerable. You're vulnerable if you put all your eggs in one basket because if you don't have a great database here, your business is going to suffer. If you have two or three pillars of business, you can always shift around. You always got options, right? I love that. Yeah, exactly. One thing that I also um, discovered, and, and it sounds like a no-brainer in hindsight, right, is that uh, it's very easy to fall into the trap of being a little scripted when you call them. Um, and, you know, after about a year or so, I started getting more comfortable making those those calls once they were on my calendar and whatnot. You build that relationship. You don't treat it like an ISA would typically treat it. I'm calling to see if you're ready now. You don't want to do that. Um, as you build that relationship and you make those notes so you know what to reference on the next call in two weeks or a month and a half, what's going on in their life and whatnot, you start getting into in a position with that potential prospect or that prospect where you can start asking them for referrals. And I, I found that I was getting referrals from them before I was even closing them because Love they that. weren't ready yet, but their son or their coworker or whatever was getting ready. And um, it, it works well. You just have to really treat it like a true relationship. You know, don't get stuck on just asking those two or three questions. So it, it, worked, it. it worked really well. And I'm looking forward to it. Uh, this time I am expanding. I'm not just having uh, the new ISA do circle prospecting, uh, the share group, uh, give us some some leads through Power ISA complimentary. So, Love so it. that, um, you know, we're working that list. I signed up through Red X. So I'm going to be tackling some expires and FISBO, see how, see how that goes. But I, <laughs> you know, I want to, I want to diversify even within the ISA, ISA realm and not just focus on one type of lead, uh, yeah. to see if that'll, that'll pay even bigger dividends this time around. I, I love that. And, and, you know, and, and you're right. I mean, you know, I, I love that example you gave, right? Because you were getting referrals from people that have never worked with you. Like, why? Because it was a connection there. Because you spoke to them. You, you, you added value. You, you answered their questions. You were nice to them on the phone, right? I mean, that that's, you know, again, like I said, it's not an easy thing to do. It is simple that way, though. It is simple that yeah. way. You talk to enough people. You have, you know, I, I like to simplify it this way. Whoever has... The most real estate focused conversations on a daily basis with new people, new people, new real estate conversations every single day. You're going to do well because that's what it's about. Having real estate focused conversations with as many people as you can. An ISA feeding people in that list is a very efficient way to do it. There's there's more than one way to kind of skin that cat, but it is simple that way. Right. I love that, Carlos, because you would call these people up, you build that relationship. And even if they were going to transact right then and there, they go, you know what? I, I'll, I'll, you know, you're a super helpful guy. You're diligent. You're keeping up with me. Hey, my son wants to work, and I want him to work with you, right? Like that's a that's a that's a big kudos. It's a big vote of confidence uh, when someone refers someone to you, almost sight unseen. Like they haven't yeah. seen you work yet, but that connection is there, right? That 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 that, that confidence is there. That trust. That trust is there. Because you've been having those conversations with them. And Carlos, give, give us an example, man. So someone gets in the list, you call them up. Is is it a monthly thing? Are you calling them once a month? Are you call, or, or, you know, if you were doing it again, how would you do it? That's probably a better question, right? If you're doing mm -hmm. it again, what would be the process? Because when you started it, you kind of failed forward, you stumbled into it, and it worked out. But if you were doing it again from the beginning, and you're, and you're recommending this to somebody else that's trying it out, what would that be, right? The ISA, because you ISA would generate the lead. ISA would do those follow-up calls. Would it be like monthly calls, you know, every couple months? And then if someone was a little bit more qualified, they'd book them on your calendar. What would that look like? So definitely at least every month. 
you don't want them okay. to forget about you or you lost all the traction that you built, right? All the trouble of, of calling and calling and finally somebody picks up, you, you, you put them on the list and then you don't call them for three months. It's like, it's a new call all over again. You gotta, yeah. it, it doesn't work well. You gotta do it every month. Of course, less if there's a reason to. So, um, you know, if if it's a warm lead with that, it's going to be ready sooner rather than later. Maybe you gave them some advice. Uh, a lot of the common ones is, you know, building credit, right? I, I run into a lot of people who didn't really have credit. It's not that they have bad credit, they just didn't have credit. So you guide them on getting that secured mm -hmm. credit card. Or maybe their spouse or their parent or their kid or their brother as, a, as an authorized user. Well, that doesn't take a month. That takes a couple of days, right? So now you have a reason to say, well, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna follow up with you in, in the next week or two to see how that went. In other words, I'm gonna follow up to see if you actually did it. But now you have a reason to call sooner rather than later. So so that's that's a very common one. When you have something of value to give them, um, whether it's advice and opinion, and now you have a reason to follow up to to get their feedback or to confirm that it got done, now you have more reason to interact with them on a on a regular basis. So whether it's the ISA that's nurturing. That definitely has to be at least every month. No more than, um, you know, no more infre infrequent than that. Or it's you as a realtor following up with them at least every month. And if you can find a reason to do it even more frequently, as long as you're not mm -hmm. just calling just to ask the same question, you have something to add, something to offer, yeah. do that. Another good one would be, you know, even though, hey, you know, yeah, uh, buyers. So I wasn't just pursuing sellers. Right, the market um, shifts, and so sometimes I was seller heavy, sometimes I was buyer heavy. They all pay the same. I like them all. So you know, if it's a buyer, you know, you get their information and what they're generally looking for. And back then, Zillow wasn't as common and popular as it is now. But I would um, set up an MLS search, send them the list. Now I have a reason to call them in two weeks because you can see in my MLS anyways if they've opened up those emails and logged in. So okay. now you can see, I uh, call them and say, hey, so, so I, I see that you opened up the list. What did you think? You know, am I in the ballpark to see what you're looking for? You know, and, and it's about talking to them frequently, making sure they don't forget about you, getting them a little excited. It's a very non-aggressive or pushy way of doing it, you know, and it builds that relationship. So ahead of um, property tax assessments, it's a great time to call people who are already on your list, if, if they're potential yeah. sellers. To see, hey, did you get that notice from the county? You know, do you feel that that's fair? Can I send you a couple of comps if you're planning on disputing it? Now you're offering, you're giving of yourself some time, mm -hmm. effort, and knowledge. You're not offering to do maybe a full walkthrough, or maybe you are, depending on how warm they are and how close they are to pulling the trigger, right? It's a good opportunity to get your foot physically in the door of their home. So it's just finding reasons to have that conversation. The, the more frequent, the better. You don't want to you don't want to do it to the point that you're pestering them. You want to you want them on board. You want them to see that you're offering something of value, something that they want or need, um, and that just helps cement that relationship. I, I love that. And, you know, and, and if I were if I were to summarize that, it's like, hey, make sure you, you or your ISA is checking in with them at least you know once a month. And if it's more than that, make sure it's because they're delivering something of value. It is because you're checking in on that property search. You're checking in on that credit. Uh, you're working on their credit, you know, whatever it happens to be, but you're in there not just saying, hey, you're ready to sell, ready to sell, ready to sell. No one's going to pick up that call after the second, third time. No one's going to pick up that call. Anymore. They're like, ah, you know, it's that guy. That guy that wants that thing that I don't really yeah. care about, right? It's all about him. It's all about, it's all about the agent, right? It's, you're not making it about the uh, uh, about the person, right? So make it about them, about helping them accomplish that goal, whatever that goal happens to be. And then you have permission to maybe do a little bit more frequently. And if not, you don't need to. If there's nothing there that they're going to give value on, and there's no motivation from them, you don't really need to do more often than that. But that monthly is great because that is, I mean, early on, that's not many calls. That adds up, you know, uh, it's it's 20 the, first, the the second month and then 40 the next one, then 60, you know, 60. It goes up by a factor of, you know, 10 or 20 every single month. And it, and it kind of adds up, right? You know, and, and, but, but that's a good place to be. I tell folks, you're in a good place to be when you're when your ISA starts setting appointments every week on their follow-up calls, just from their follow-up calls of leads that they generated months ago, right? They're generating appointments, they're generating hand raisers from their own nurturing, their own follow-up, yep. let alone new people that come into the pipeline. So when you're getting both, new people coming into the pipeline can always be a, a great, a great win. And then you're getting conversions from the people you're nurturing 
uh, that's a good spot to be in. Then you start to gain that that traction. It just it takes time though. And with circle, it probably takes the most time. With, with, with something like circle prospecting you know let, let's not you know let's be honest with folks here right like it, it, it it's gonna take the, the most time i agree with you carlos that probably these other lead sources like sprinkling them in uh is a good idea because my gut tells me that it's not going to be six months of calling you before people are pulling the trigger with those lists it tends to be shorter for them like it just it just does right it just is you know uh, uh for sale by owner expired canceled uh absentee uh, you know, those, those kind of things. Those folks tend to have, it's just, again, same game. It's the same game. It is a, gener- ISA generates the hand raiser. You connect with them and you're following up every month. It's the same game. It's just that the motivation is very different. Okay. Motivation is very different, unexpired. I mean, they literally already hired an agent to sell their home, an expired listing. I mean, and that, yeah. they almost had their bags packed, right? So that's a very different situation than someone you're calling out of the blue that might be doing something next year. Maybe, maybe not. Very, very different, you know, uh, uh, situation, very different motivation. But I want to, I want to stress this for folks. The game is the same. The game is the same. Checking in with them, following up every single month and finding really good reasons to call even more frequently than that, right? Yeah. That That is, it is exactly the same. <clears throat> and I do tell folks that that is it. And here's the, here's the better one, right? Here's the punchline. If you're generating your leads from Facebook and Google, it, it, it's also the same game, Right. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's the exact same thing. Except that, you know, instead of paying the ISA to generate, you're paying Google to generate yeah. those leads for you. Facebook to generate those leads for you. Same. But once they've been generated, it's all about connecting with them, building that relationship and adding some value. Exactly the same game. It's just that for people that don't know this, the ROI of those Zillow, Facebook, Google leads is going to be way lower than a prospecting-based business, right? It's way, it's not close, actually, right? The, the cost per acquisition, and it adds up, and the conversion rates, it, it is very different. It's very different what, what those leads cost you. So at the end of the day, if you're a prospecting-based business, you're going to make more money than an internet lead-based business. And I don't say that to knock internet leads. I love internet leads, right? I, I pay for it myself every single day. But... I don't rely on them solely because they're they're the most expensive way to generate business, yeah. right? So th- that 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 took me a while to learn, by the way. Like, oh, oh, I learned it the hard way. But, oh, oh, interesting. That's why I make all this content, right? So you, just just so you guys know, because this is a much more efficient way to reach all of you folks, you know, my 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 audience, right? So Carlos, you know, I appreciate man, I, I appreciate your time. I want to be I want to be mindful of that. If people want to, you know, I don't know, reach out to you, continue the conversation, ask you some questions. What's the best way for people to reach out to you, you know, strangers, fellows, fellow friends from the internet? You know, they can, they can call, they can uh, send a text message. You can publish my number if you'd like, 210-725-2153. Um, for a while there, I was getting calls from people who were... Um, oh, I'm sure. <laughs> because my 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 references for Power ISA is, is on, or was or is on your website. And I like to talk to people. Um, you know, it's a it's a great way to grow your business and and not pay Zillow four hundred bucks a lead because that's what it's running in most areas in San Antonio. Yep. Um, yep. For San bad Antonio. numbers and whatnot. So uh, yeah, happy to answer any questions. I definitely would not say that I've mastered a- any aspect of of what we're do- doing, but I'm proud to say that even though I have not, it has paid great dividends. Very Love grateful it. to Power to awesome. say for that. That's great. Uh, Carlos, always great talking to you, man. And, you know, and and let's get started with 2.0, version 2.0, version 2024 of that, of that, you know, lead machines. Let's get going. Awesome. Thanks so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. 